about a meeting earlier today. Actually, I started I started a new W-2 job today, and our first meeting was on Teams. And uh, my name during that meeting was Jillian. <laughs> my 16-year-old daughter has a Teams account, and apparently that account was on my PC when I when I put my camera off for a second, the picture that popped up was this cartoon character. And I'm like, oh, great. What a what a lovely impression I'm making on my first day at, at my new job. So anyway, oh, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> no, no one even said anything. It's like, it's kind of like you're walking around with your fly open and nobody wants to say anything about it, right? <laughs> oh, too funny. So uh, you don't look like Mary Jane, but... <laughs> I think um, I think you had Mary Jane in the background there with you, or maybe your name is Mary Jane. I don't know. That's totally fine. There you go. I well, I fixed it. It's, Hi, it's, Mary, it's Jane. Mary Jane. It's Ronald. Hey, I, I figured you weren't Mary Jane, but nice to see you there, Mary Jane. You too. I'll be here in the background. So, how did you guys find us? Uh, we heard you from uh, another, well, part of another mentorship program uh rock Cleaves warrior program awesome nice. and yep. uh we linked up with iffy yep and, and uh she you know she told us about you guys and we're in the you know beginning stages learning phase of multifamily and just been watching uh your youtube videos awesome. and i think mary jane has joined live a few times and this is my first live mm -hmm. and uh and yeah. Yeah. So do you know the name uh Ed Moser uh Moser? Edmund Mozell. Ed's that's Mozell, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Okay. So Ed's a warrior and yeah. he's actually gonna be at a live event here on in, I'm in Atlanta uh on Friday, and I'm so disappointed that I I can't go. Oh, I'm not that disappointed. We have tickets to a James Taylor concert. So I'm kind of excited about that, but I'm very disappointed that I'm not going to get to meet Ed in person. I attended uh, Rod's virtual event back in January, I think it was. And, you know, he had, if you've been to that, he's got all these, he does multiple panels, which are awesome. And I basically kept track of all of those people and I've reached out to most of them and scheduled one on ones with them. And Ed was my first one. So um, Ed was a rich, super nice guy, but I ha have to admit, I was so disappointed after that call. And the reason was, is it's like Ed was just, Ed's too far ahead, right? He's, <laughs> he's too far ahead of me. I can't get any of his time. But I'm so glad that that didn't make me quit calling these people, right? Because what I quickly learned is many of the other warriors are just one step ahead of me. And so I made a lot of great connections through that. Um, you know, one day I'll be able to get more of Ed's time, but right now isn't the time. And that, again, that's why I'm so disappointed that I, I would have loved to have gone to meet him face to face, but uh, not going to be able to do that this Friday. So anyway, um, we, it looked like we weren't going to have anybody here and boom, all of a sudden we got a a room full of people. So not, not as many as we usually have, but that's awesome. Um, I, I won't go through everybody to see how you got here, but I'd love for you guys to put that in the chat. Some of you, obviously, I know, but uh, especially if you're here for the first time, let us know you're a first timer. Um, and even if this, you've been here many times, if you can put in the chat how you found this group, that's really helpful to us. And I think it's helpful for the other people in the room to get to know you too, right? And that's one of the things we want to we want to encourage here is get to know the other people in the room, schedule meetings one on one, uh, you know, during the week, and because this is where the teams are built. This is where you're going to meet people that you're going to do deals with. So, um, if you're already doing deals, awesome. We'd love for you to put that. Um, in the chat as well, let us know, you know, where you own assets, what put your buy box in the chat, you know, let us know everything about you that you can, because we, we want to know who you are, we want to know how we can, we can best support you and best help you. Um, so, you know, most of you know that we are the multifamily freedom chasers, 
We do right now four Zooms a week. I think we're looking to add a fifth with the topics uh, and subject soon to be released. But uh, every Sunday night, come join us. And all the Zooms now are at 8 p.m. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Sunday night, we do our activation Zoom. Monday night, we do our broker calls, which is really going to become more broker. We'll, we'll listen to some broker calls. Um, I want to listen to your broker calls. The homework every week is go record yourself. Go make broker calls, record some of those calls, send them in so we can listen to them and talk to you about them. Um, and we'd love for you to volunteer to have them played here on this call. So it's very encouraging for people to hear these calls, uh, even if they don't go well, right? At the end of the day, you can't mess this stuff up. Right? You know, it's there's so many brokers out there. Um, you're, if you make, quote, a mistake, it's not like you're going to make a mistake you can't recover from. So uh, it's just, it's about taking action, getting more comfortable, gain, gaining more confidence making those calls. So that's Monday, Tuesday, we do napkin underwrite with Ed Shamarian up there in the corner. Um, Ed is kind enough to support me here on Monday nights as well. And then on Wednesday nights, we have two different Zooms. One is with Jerry Miles, who's also up there on the top of my screen. Uh, way for your fans there, Jerry. <laughs> uh, and he does our, our debt call with his wife, Shelly. And they all, he alternates every other week with our very own underwriting ninja, Victor NG. And Victor does more of Ed does the, the napkin on Tuesdays, uh, and then Victor does the deep dive on Wednesday. So uh, you get activated on Sunday, you go call your brokers on Monday, you bring your deals to the napkin underwriting on Tuesday, and then if it makes sense to go deeper, we go deeper on Wednesday. So you can soup to nuts in one week, get it all done, close your deal on Friday, and then go enjoy your weekend. That, that's how that, that's how it works. We get that deals closing every week, right, Ed? Crickets. Yeah, why not? One a, one a week. All right, so maybe we're not closing deals every week, but we're yeah, working, week we're, we're working towards that goal. Minimum. Oh, Looks like I'm locked up. Can you hear me? Okay, I don't know if Peter can hear. Um, but yeah, so essentially, um, someone actually brought up a good point in the chat. Um, and we're here to for any questions or anything like this, please participate. Um, get over fear of calling brokers. What are some obstacles people have when talking to brokers? Is it just making the call or is it objectives or is it not knowing what to ask? At this point, Ed, for me, it's just making sure I schedule time to make the phone calls. So just make it a part of my week. Yeah, and I think that's the, I don't want to say it's the easiest problem to overcome, but it's definitely like similar to me where making the calls isn't the problem, finding time to do it is. Um, and also, it is a numbers game. Here's a problem with this. Um, at least from experience with cold calling, for me has always been every time I'm about to stop, that next call ends up being like a home run. It sucks. <laughs> like it's a really frustrating thing because you're like, okay, I've done a, let's say hundred calls on the dialogue. I've had a good day. Like I did a lot, like I did what I was supposed to. That hundred first, I'm like, see, now every time I'm just gonna try to do that one more because you never know who you're gonna call next. And I think that's big. Um, it, it's you never know who, who's going to be on that next call, um, especially with agents. Spend a little bit of time as well. And I think this goes back to something I say multiple times a week and multiple weeks in a row of knowing your market. It's I hate to say it like this, like it's not wasting time, but it's be efficient and effective with who you're calling. Don't call the new agent who got their license yesterday. It's just the reality of it. Yeah, they may be hungry. They may be willing to work for you, but it's a massively, it's just a different beast you're taking on where, yeah, they could have value, but if you call every single newbie on the block, well, you're going to want someone experienced batting for you too. 
Um, are they hard, harder to build the rapport with? Are they going to have more buyers? Are they going to have more people um, asking them for deals? Absolutely. But that's where you try to actually build a relationship and grow the, through with them in that sense. And you work with them to make sure that you can um, show your value and close deals. And that's the bottom line. Uh, a broker's favorite buyer is the one that closes, not the one who sends them the best gift. Like, no, they, they want people who sell and who can, or who buy and can close. And that's the bottom line. Anyone interested in 50 units? I got 102. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll look at anything, everything, everywhere, any time, of the, any time zone, island, not island, California, not California. Doesn't matter to me. I'll look at it. Um, I actually just signing up. Oh, damn. I have to sign this LOI. My bad. But uh, yeah, I'm signing an LOI right now in 120 unit in Florida. Um, I like OKC. I like North Carolina. Um, shoot, I have to sign this. But yeah, put, this is what this is what this is about. Like, put where you're looking, put where you're buying, put what you're interested in, put your background. Um, so it, it's really about making sure that you're networking. You know, um, I'm just gonna put my email so you guys have it and you can send me anything that's interesting. Uh, cool. So if you guys can actually each take a second, put your info there too. There you go. Peter put it, um, just so that we can make sure we have that. Yeah. Sorry. I lost connection there for a minute. That's, uh, that's been happening more and more often for me. I've got to look at a new internet provider. That's not going to work for me. So, um, one thing we talk about every week is if you don't have the broker script that we use and you would like it, just send me an email. I just put my email in the chat. Uh, just put broker script in the subject and we'll get that forwarded to you. Um, that's the best way to get, get access to that quickly. Uh, so I'm going to pick on a couple of people real quick. Mario, have you... I appreciate you being here again. I know you've been an active participant here. Have you been making calls this past week? Yeah, while you were gone, I shared with Ed, that's been a challenge for me just to make sure I calendar time to call. So review a couple of packages, but they're packages that I could receive online. So I haven't had any broker calls per se. So I told you that's my challenge. I've got to make sure I calendar time each week to actually make the proactive phone call. I have follow-up calls, but I haven't made any initial calls as of last week. Gotcha. Um, are you, you work in a W-2, right? No, I'm a traditional agent here in Vegas. So I okay, do, uh, that's right. Real yeah. yeah, but you have, a, you have a day job that certainly is uh, occupying plenty of time even though it's not a W-2, so. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that's, you know, another thing I didn't mention, but that's what this group is all about, right? We're, most of us are W-2 employees and we're trying to figure out how to chase this dream uh, in between those activities, right? Am I still cutting in and out or mm -hmm. are you guys hearing me clearly? No, you're good. Okay. Because Mario was cutting out for me. I don't know if it's his end or my end, but cool. Thanks. No, he was cutting out for me too. <laughs> okay. Uh, I get it. Well, we all struggle with that from time to time. Um, good. I see a lot of people putting their information in the chat. So, I, Mario, you and I can do it if you want to. But what I really want to do today, I don't have any calls queued up to play. Um, again, look, for those of you who weren't here early, uh, this one snuck up on me this time if Ed hadn't hadn't texted me a half an hour ago I wouldn't be here right now I'd be out walking with my wife but um this new schedule's got me got me messed up but next week we'll be we'll be here and we'll be prepared um what I want to do today is do some role play and I love volunteers for that 
I'm not opposed to volunteering people, but I love for people who are, so let, let me ask this, and um, put a one in the chat if you have never, or put a zero in the chat if you have never called a broker. Um, it'd be helpful to know who's who hasn't even gotten started calling brokers. Okay. Um, so Mark, I see you haven't called brokers. Awesome. Are, are you here because you want to call brokers or are you here just to learn? What, why are you guys here? Help, help me understand that. Um, Cheryl, I think you've called brokers if I'm not mistaken. I know you, you've done some deals. Um, are you actively calling brokers, Cheryl? If you can unmute, did you answer in the chat? Hi, hi everybody. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, um, happy Monday. Happy Monday. So yes. help me on, are you calling brokers? Um, I'm just doing a lot of um, networking and um, leads by, um, you know, walking into uh, like real estate offices. Nice. Today was, the, today was the first day I did that. Okay. Awesome. When you say you're walking into real estate offices, what kind of real estate office? Um, this was our review. Um, yeah, realty uh, man management in um, Jamaica Plain, Mass. Okay, so but you're you're going into just like residential offices where they tend to market and sell single family homes. Um, I didn't get into too much depth. I I inter um, I introduced myself. I got gotcha. you. Okay. And I gave them my contact information and explained to them what I what I was looking to do. Okay. All right. So that, that brings up an interesting uh, thought in my mind. You know, what we do here is we call we're calling brokers, right? And the way we start that process typically is to get on Craxi or or uh, LoopNet to look for deals that are being marketed and we're not necessarily targeting those deals specifically, although we certainly, sometimes we we do, we submit LOIs on deals like that, right? But the goal is we look for properties that are listed because that tells us the brokers that are listing multifamily assets. And then we just establish relationships with those brokers. Um, I also want to network with all the single family residential agents that I know and let them know that I'm buying multifamily. Who because, you are. <laughs> yeah, because every once in a while, right? Even though that's not their focus, they'll have a customer that comes to them and they have a multifamily asset they wanna sell. That's a perfect lead for people like us because that agent doesn't know anything about that market. So that seller, if they're going to their residential agent to sell their multifamily property, there's a good chance they're kind of a mom and pop owner and that's who we're looking for. So I, you're not gonna get a ton of leads from them, but it's just one of those things that, hey, when, you're, when you run into a, a single family real estate agent, don't forget to tell them as well that you're looking for multifamily assets. Um, I wouldn't spend all your time all day, every day calling those people. You want to be calling the people that are more likely to bring you deals in the multifamily space, which are going to be your commercial brokers. But make sure you're telling all those agents, you know, what you do for sure. So, um, and I'm definitely doing more of that because I, I wasn't, right? I have a conversation with a, with a residential agent and we talk more about single family and fix and flip deals, which that's what I do during the day. I'm a lender. And I lend on fix and flip deals, mostly here in Georgia, but the company I work for covers basically all of the South from 
southwest to southeast. Um, Great. But uh, yeah, yeah. So um, now, Cheryl, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've already been involved in a multifamily deal, right? Uh, yes, I was an owner um, a while back. Um, okay. It, uh, probably long, a lot, a lot um, time has passed um, to speak about, but um, it was a three family. Okay. And I, I, um, I inherited from my, my late father um, and my, my family and I did a like three, three share um, inheritance and one of our, our sisters, we part, we gave her her share up front and then my brother proceeded to take me through one of the most grueling, <laughs> painful, scary, turbulent financial times in my life. Um, but it was it was worth the experience. Um, right, right. Well, sorry to sorry to bring up a painful event, but um, yeah, <laughs> I, I I was thinking you had done some other stuff, but you know, like you said, you, it was a learning experience, right? And that's what we're all here for. We're here to learn. I'm I'm looking at some of the stuff in the chat here. So, Kat, Kat you asked, how does that work with an agent? Do they expect three percent? It's a great question. And at the end of the day, they can expect whatever they want. 3% is very unusual on a, it, it's not impossible, right? And if the deal makes sense, I've certainly seen 3% commissions being paid, but that's an expectation in the single family world. That's not the typical expectation in the commercial world. So uh, I can actually, so I actually am going to this right now. Um, one three percent even on residential is high, like at, at least in LA, like you're getting two and a half as low as two one and a half sometimes, but two to two and a half is normal. For example, I have a seventeen point five million dollar one I'm offering on right now in Florida, hundred twenty units, um, off market, and uh, the agents like, hey, they're gonna have to cover commission. So I'm like, hey. Like, okay, why? First of all, <laughs> always ask, like, is a seller willing to do it? Because you never know till you ask. Secondly, he's like, we started going back and forth. I'm like, look, the price is going to reflect whatever commission you're charging and whatever, uh, if I have to pay it. If it's coming out of the seller, then I don't care. I'm gonna, just going to offer what makes sense for me. But if I have to bring out of pocket, which is essentially just a capital raise, so that's the only way it's going to work because it's coming out of the sales price. Um, but if it's commission that I have to pay, that means I have to factor it in as capital raise. So I just take it off of the top of what uh, I'm going to offer. So if they want 17.4, I'll do times 0.01% or times 0.01, reduce that off the sales price. You don't like it? Counter me. And if it still works for me, then I'll respond. If not, too bad. Um, that's just the bottom line. So yes. Um, anytime you're working with an agent, keep in mind that they, mo the most important part and the reason they're talking to you is because they want to get paid. Always make sure you make it clear that, hey, we will take care of you no matter what. You're not going to get left out of the deal. We just need to make sure you have our best interest and find us the best deal. The better the deal, the more meat on the bone, the easier it is to stomach that or to factor into your numbers. If it's already tight and they surprise you at the end, that's not fun. Um, so I would also recommend make it very clear up front what that structure is. Who's paying for what? How much are they expecting? So, like This agent particularly offered me, hey, we can even turn it into an equity position. That'll be cheaper up front. Let me repeat that. That's cheaper up front. Long term, it's more expensive. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, any other questions on commission or how that works and how to factor that into your equation? Can you repeat I think that last part again for me. Sorry. No, that's fine. In regards to the um, making sure they get paid, or just like the the equity position. Uh, in regards when you said uh, it's, it seems better upfront, but it's not. 
Yeah. So equity, anytime you are giving equity away, you are not paying them up front. Okay, keep that in mind. Technically, it may come out of your acquisitions fee, but that's a different story. But if I'm your agent, let's say, and you're the buyer, and I say, give me equity, up front, you're not paying me anything. But just keep in mind, every month, every quarter, and at the end of the deal, I'm going to be sitting there, even if it's just 1%, saying, hey, remember me? Remember that 1% you gave me when the property is worth a million, and now it's worth 10 million, hypothetically? I get 1% of 10 million. I don't get 1% of 1 million. So does it cost you more in that sense? Yes, because you're paying 1% on the purchase price. The only way it'll cost you less is if the property is worth less than what you bought it for. And then you have bigger problems on your hand than the commission. So who cares at that point? At that point, you're in a sinking ship and run. Um, so that's essentially what it is. It's, I'm paying either 1% today's purchase price or 1% on tomorrow's value once I do the heavy lifting. Um, yeah, I think. Go ahead. Ed. What if the agent is bringing wholesale off market deals? Doesn't that change 100%? For example, the last deal I offered on with these guys, the same agents as this one, was off market. They got us in the door. They knew the agents. They so on and so forth. And um, that one we had to cover up front. There was like, we were paying it. We're like, all right, fine, whatever. It, was, it still worked in our numbers, so we didn't care. Remember, don't say no out of greed. And I want to make that clear. If you're saying no, make sure you're saying no because, hey, I can't offer that much or I can't add that to my capital raise. I'm lowering my offer. But to say no just because you don't want to do it is a bad reason. I would say no if it doesn't fit in my numbers. I would say, hey, I'd love to, but we, we got to move things around or lower the price. When it's off market, it's more likely you're going to pay the commission. So don't be opposed to paying it. It's the same way as a, a single family home flipper who pays a wholesale fee because the wholesale brings in good deals. It's the same idea. Um, there's some I'm working with, I partnered with on two previous commercial credible returns. I have to look for it again. Okay. Crunch the numbers and see if you can do 3% buyer fee and also commission. No, I would never do 3%. Buyer fee? Oh, your acquisition fee. Is that what you're talking about? Can you unmute? I think it'd be easier to have that conversation. You bring up a point that is important. Hey, sorry, I'm just gonna come on camera. Yeah, yeah, I've, you're good. I have I have the baby sleeping, so I have to be quiet. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm I, I have a particular agent who I've been working with, who is a, a friend of a friend who has her a single family home. Um, her her agent's license. Sorry, Liam just woke up. My husband is on baby duty now. <laughs> Um, but so she's sending me a deals. Yeah, she's sending me a lot of deals that are um off market wholesale, and some of them have that plus three percent buyer's fee. But I know I haven't had this conversation with her, but I know that she's expecting her commission as well. So that's where I'm kind of like, okay, I want to, you know, she's vetting it out. But but then there's that three percent buyer's fee, which I know is going to the wholesaler. So do we pay both or I guess, do we just crunch the numbers and kind of see if the numbers make sense to do both? I mean, it's just kind of crazy. So with all due respect, any wholesaler that uh, one, what's your price point? That's the biggest question. Uh, I'm not trying to turn any wholesaler. I don't care how great a deal is. I love you. You guys are all great. Any wholesalers listening. I'm not making you a millionaire overnight. Bottom line. It's just, you have to be realistic. If there's enough, again, if you want the commission or you want 3%, find me a deal where I have room to give you 3%. That's mm. what I always offer a price based on what I can, because remember, I, I will pay whatever it takes for the deal for it to make sense for me. And that's the bottom line. If no deal works because of that 3%, you make it clear, like, look, your 3% is not realistic. And two, first of all, second of all, 3% is way too much on a, even a $10 million deal. I'm not giving 3%. On the right. 17 million, I'm giving one. So on these money, larger deals, that's that's typical. One percent. Yeah. Right. Two, right? And, and you have to remember this. If you're putting this deal together on a large multifamily, you want to leave some room for acquisition fee from for yourself. Right. Like, don't like yes, as much as we do care about our investors, you need something to keep the business going as well. 
you know, like we we do the hard heavy lifting, and sometimes we forget. Like I'm the first to say, take care of your investors. But if you're stressed out and you're hating the property because of your last to eat, your the whole sh uh, ship is gonna sink. So um, if there's also another agent involved, they have to figure that out. Like I I, I stopped subscribing to all these wholesalers who are sending me twenty different properties, and all of them are. 3% and they're just copy paste from other people like that's yeah that's what I, that's doing right now <laughs> from yeah, yeah. I, I've gotten the same deal from three or four different people in the same day all with the same exact text the text the same yeah mistakes, which is my biggest pet peeve like at that point I'm just like no like this isn't going anywhere so be very cautious in regards to who, how much time you're spending on bad leads the reason why why reason why it could take you a long time to get into a deal isn't necessarily because it, it, it's, it's really hard to vet who you're actually talking to. Yeah. And that's why you got to get on the phone, right? A lot of times you have to have one-on-one -on -one conversations to really understand who you're talking to. Kat, let me ask you a question. You, you said, <laughs> it sounds like you've seen multiple deals with this 3%. Are these multifamily deals or these single family deals? Like, give me a range of size in terms of asking price. Yeah, they're all multifamily deals, but um, so I have, I have, I have been calling um brokers, um, but uh, this particular agent, since she's a friend, she's just getting into. Whoop! You got muted. You muted yourself. Sorry, I think I swiped. Um, okay. yeah just started in multifamily so so I kind of educated her like my whole journey this past year have, has been in multifamily so I'm getting her into it but she's seems like like exactly um what uh 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 Edward was saying where basically like she was just copy and pasting like it, yeah. I have a 56 unit a 72 unit a couple 20 okay. units which aren't in my buy box but the but those big ones just seem to be you know copy and paste forward yeah. forward forward and all of them are they they seemed attractive in the beginning because they were all off market but yeah. uh, you know I'm I'm starting to realize that I think it's what Edward was saying uh, you know they just have uh, and she's told me this too where they have like an agent chat of all these off market deals and then they get some wholesaler stuff too so. Yeah. I didn't realize that that's probably exactly what what she's doing to send me deals so it's uh it's interesting yeah yeah that's sure. it when, when you're talking multifamily, especially if you're talking you know 30 40 50 units or more and you see that three percent that's somebody who very likely they have no idea what they're doing right they, mm -hmm. they've watched a webinar they've been to one seminar and they're just daisy chaining anything they can daisy chain and they probably came out of a single family world where a 3% commission is nothing, right? I mean, a, a wholesale deal could easily oh, right. pay the, yeah, a wholesale deal could pay a wholesaler 20 grand. It could be way more than 3%. Um, right, right. But in the multifamily world, it, it's, you know, especially on those bigger deals, nobody's getting 3%, especially on some daisy chain, right? Um, yeah. So it, it is hard to determine who you're, you know, I love the ones where they say, well, I'm direct to broker. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Good. What does that mean? So am I. <laughs> uh, we're all direct to broker. I mean, if you're not talking to a seller now, look, and there are wholesalers that have relationships with brokers and they get legitimate deals and they bring legitimate deals and ask for a legitimate fee. And that's the end of the day is it, there are things that are usual and customary, but yeah. everything is always negotiable, period, right? If they yeah, bring you a yeah. deal and the 3% kills the deal, but you could pay them 1% to do the deal. You, I mean, I think they'd probably take 1%, especially if it's a $15 million deal, right? So it's it's all negotiable. Do the numbers work? If the numbers don't, you know, that's what our napkin underwrite is for. Let's see if the basic numbers work. Does this even warrant a second look? With a, And sometimes with a 3% fee, it doesn't. But with a half a percent fee, it would. Then you go back to your easy chainer and say, what do you want to do? You want to move forward? If not, see you next, right? We've got it. You've got to figure out a way to, to get through these things quickly and and figure out which ones require more time, which ones not require, which ones warrant more time. Right? That's the key. 
which ones require warrant more of my time? Because that's critical. We've got to make the best use of our time. So speaking of that, we're already at 40 minutes. We only have 20 minutes to go. I'd really love to do some role playing and I'd love somebody to volunteer to do that. Who hasn't made calls yet? Who wants to? I know, Mark, I know you said you want to make calls. Would you like to role play? I, I have no idea what to say, but I'm, I'm down to learn. <laughs> All right. Um, Mario, you don't have a, do you have a recorded call that we could queue up? I could give you screen sharing and do you have one handy? I Would know you, I sent you one a few weeks ago. Yeah, I know you did. I'm trying to think of where you sent that. I, I'd love for them to at least listen to one and then we could do a role play. Mark, did you see my email? I don't, what, which email is that? All right, I posted my email address. I'm going to do it again right now. Can you shoot me an email right now? Okay. Um, and just put broker script in the in the subject. And I'd love to I'd love to do some role play with you. We'll get the script in your hand. Is there anybody else who would like to do role play tonight? I see you sure. trying to avoid looking at me there, Rosa. Is that supposed to be an ad? Uh, or, uh, uh, this, hey Peter, this is yeah, Dexter. I'm sorry, really yeah. playing for tonight. Okay, awesome. Do you, yeah, obviously that's supposed to be at gmail.com. Sorry. Okay. I <laughs> uh, didn't didn't get it all done. Let me do that again. So Dexter, have you been calling yet? Yes, I have. I call brokers all the time, but uh, it was a limited belief that I had also with calling brokers. They're human, just like everyone else on this call. They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like everyone else, right? So tell me about that. What was your limiting belief? Um, not knowing what to say, not having all my numbers together, and then um, just fear of saying the wrong thing, knowing that they are the gatekeepers in some aspect of properties if you're not cold calling sellers directly, right. direct to sellers. Okay. So now you said you're calling, you're doing a lot of calling now. Do you have a script that you work with? Um, no, I used to, but I, um, if I find a deal off Crexy or Loop Dead or whatnot, I give that broker my buy box and reach out to them via email or a text once a week to stay on okay. top of them. All right. So, but you did say you're calling them too, right? Yes, I'm calling them too. Yes. All right. So what, let's do that. Walk me through a, a typical call. What are you asking them? Uh, let's say, hey, Peter, how you doing? This is Dexter. I see your property at 123 Main Street. You listed on Crexy for $3 million to 24 unit. Uh, Peter, what's the market cap in that area? Okay. Uh, in that area for C-class property, the market cap's probably about six. Okay, that's six. Now, this price that you have listed, is that the seller by best and final offer? Uh, by best and uh, action price, final yeah. action price? They're, they're probably a market seller. So they're, they're, they're considering offers at this time. Okay, right on. Can you tell me a little history about the property? How long have the seller been owning it? Anything else that you mind sharing with me? Awesome. I love that question, right? That's so that's number one on uh, number. Well, okay. Number one is, is the property still available? <laughs> number, number two is tell me the story behind this property. And a lot of times I don't really have to ask anything else because they'll tell me everything else on the list by telling me that story. So I, I, I love that. Um, yeah, they, you know, these people own a lot of property. Um, this is the only one they own in that market, and they just don't want to manage a property in that market. Anymore. Okay, that's um, good to hear. So they have uh, property management issues. What is the um, current occupancy rate? Is it accurate from this T12 that I'm looking at? Yeah, that T12 is, is pretty up to date. I think that was current as of last month. So whatever oh, yeah. that says. Okay, it says uh, May May twelfth on here. Another thing I had noticed from my underwriting that y'all haven't collected, I know laundry fees since the beginning of the year. What's going on with that? 
Yeah, the laundry machines are all down. The laundry machines are down. Is the, um, the owner of the laundry machine that a mom and pop, or are y'all done with a big box laundry machine provider? No, I think the uh, I think the owner is doing it himself. Okay, well that makes sense. So that's another way to uh, bring some money back in towards the NOI. Absolutely. In this area, I know that they're um, charging for parking stalls, and I didn't see that on the T12. Is that Nobody, something? Nobody's paying for parking. All parking is provided for free. Okay, that's another opportunity I can see I can add to the NOI. So um, per my underwriting, we wouldn't have come in at an offer of 2.1 and I see you had it for 3 million. That's something your seller would entertain. Uh, that's probably gonna be a little light. All right, no problem at all. Well, Peter, if things change on your seller end, me and my team are serious buyers. We buying properties in the area closing in 60 days with all cash. All right. That sounds good. I like the all cash. I like the 60 days. Where's the money coming from? Um, the money is coming from a team of group of investors that I have. We have the money to put down the earnest money deposit, if that's going to be asked when we submit the LOI and also can submit proof of funds. Okay. So you can submit proof of funds if, if, if the seller needs that. Yes. All right. Yeah, that we'll talk more about that in a minute, but uh, okay, sounds <laughs> good. Now, do you so do you already have the did you get the T12 and the rent roll off the website? Uh, yes, and I see that those were dated last month, um, uh, in May, so I believe that's the most current ones. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, anything else I can tell you right now? Um, nope, that's it right now. Um, thank you for your talk for your time. I sent over my name, number, and my email to your email. And like I said, if things change on your seller end, please give us a call. Awesome. Great job. Great job. Um, yeah, I, I can tell just from that role play that you've you've called some brokers. You've had this conversation before, right? Yes, sir. Yes, All right. So before I give my feedback, I'd like somebody on the, somebody else, not you, Ed, probably not you, Jerry. Uh, no, somebody, else to, somebody else to give me, what, what did you think about that? Is that helpful to you? What did he do well? What do you think he could have done better? What do you guys, what, what feedback can you guys give? We need to make well, this interactive. Uh, hi, Peter, it's Mario. Yeah. Um, it's a, yeah. Um, I, I thought Dexter did a really good job on the call. Like you said, it, his confidence certainly uh, conveys even in this role play, and he certainly made this call more than once. Uh, I, I like the fact that he was prepared with questions, you can tell. And it took him a minute to kind of follow where he was, but that he already had the information and already reviewed it and had a list of questions that all seemed relevant to coming up with the solution. So I thought he asked very good questions that he was certainly someone who was experienced with reviewing the information. He was clear with, uh, with their process of what things look like. He was, he kind of headed off whatever questions there may be in terms of proof of funds and how they were going to finance the property or purchase the property. I thought he did that, did that really well. So I had nothing but positives for his, for his approach. All right. Yeah. Thank you. No, absolutely. I, I would say the same. I didn't have any necessarily negatives. Um, anybody else have? Mark, I think you had unmuted. What, what were your oh, thoughts on that? Um, I think it was good. I think like, like uh, Mario said, he had confidence and knew exactly what to ask and um, knew how to answer your questions as well. Um, my question is like, when you're first calling a broker and trying to create a connection with a broker, like, what are the key points that you're supposed to ask? Like, what are, like, like, are there, like, three main key points that you're supposed to ask? And, like, what is, like, what should you know to be prepared to talk to a broker? Yep. So the script is going to really help you with that. And I, I will send that to you. Okay. And 
Uh, you know, I need to record a short video that I can post on the YouTube channel so I can just refer people to that and say, hey, go listen to this. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll make a note to do that. But again, I start with, you know, I ask them to tell me the story. And they usually give you a lot of the information when you do that. And, and what I'm looking for is really is what's the seller's story? What's their situation? Right? Why do they want to sell this property? Um, and that gives you so much of the, the background and, and some of the other details almost become irrelevant when you understand their motivation, right? But uh, beyond that, you know, what's the whisper price? What's, or the guy, it also called the guidance price. Um, in this case, Dexter was, you know, kind of throwing out a, a ballpark that, hey, this is where I'm at based on my underwriting, which is a perfectly legitimate thing to do. It, it, shows I've look, I've looked at the numbers, I've done some preliminary underwriting, and this is what I think it's worth. Now you take you can take that a step further and say, I know they're asking three. I'm I can offer 2.1 and here's why. Right. What? Here are the numbers. Here is why this I believe this property is a 2.1 million dollar property. Help me understand where I'm wrong. Because maybe I am. Because this is all that's the other thing. <laughs> it's nothing more than math. Now the math for you might be, well, you have to make 8% interest on your money. Well, if the math for me is that I only have to make 5% interest on my money, then I can pay more, right? So my price is not necessarily the right price. My price is just my price. That's what I'm willing to pay. If it doesn't line up with what they're willing to sell for, then we can't do a deal. That's okay. We can still be friends. It's, it's just math. And my math isn't always... I mean, the math, this isn't a common core math, right? The, the, result, the answers aren't any different. It's just my numbers don't line up with yours. That's all. And, and that's okay. That's not a problem. So I, I asked the guidance price or the whisper price, same thing. Um, another question, again, you'll get this on the, on the script when I send it to you, but is there a call for offers date? Um, and that's just a date by which they've said, hey, we want to see all offers by this date. A lot of times there isn't. They're just they'll, the broker will just tell you no. They're just accepting offers. Is there a call for what? Call for offers. Offers date. Call for so offers date. Yep. Sometimes they set a date, and it's like if you want to play, you have to get your offer in by this date. And sometimes that's pretty, you know, that's written in stone. Most of the right. time it is right. If you send a viable offer the day after the calls for offer date they'll probably have a conversation with you. But, right. you know, if you're in a super hot market and they got six offers, you might be out, right? So yeah. it, it's, you want to know, if, it's two things that that does, right? If there is a date, you want to know what it is, number one. Number two, you sound like you know what you're talking about. That's really the biggest reason I asked that question is because they know I know, they assume I have experience. Even though I've never bought a multifamily property myself, they don't know that. And all that is, is a, it's just a matter of gaining confidence and the script will help you gain confidence. And then taking that and doing some role play will help you gain further confidence. So um, can, you, you. You know, can you send me the OM? And that's offering memorandum. Uh, sometimes they don't even have one. And especially for the, if it's on market, almost certainly they have an OM. If it's an off-market situation, they may, may not have put that together yet. And to me, that's a that's a can be a very good sign. They haven't really put any thought into this. They haven't prepared. That could be a good opportunity to get in there and, and buy a property from a mom and pop situation. Um, can you send? You know, and of course, here in this case, Dexter played that as if I, I've already got the numbers. I've already seen it. Normally, when I'm making these phone calls. I'm calling just to establish a relationship, right? I haven't gone in and, and dug into any of the information before I call. So I'm calling to get the number. Can you send me the T12 and the rental? So when you at, you're asking for the OM, the T12, and the rental, those are the three things you want to come away from this call with, because if you have that, now you can go do your napkin underwriting. Without wonder, that, you can't. I want to jump in. I want to jump in real quick. Sure. It's important to also get familiar with who the agent is, where they like. Hey, is this a market you, um, that you focus in? Is this your 
a primary market that you um, work in? Can you tell me about like, um, do you have anything else in the area? I would almost always end a call with that. Not to get distracted from this, but it's like, hey, I'm running the numbers on this just in case this doesn't work out. Is there anything else in the area that might, uh, is similar? Or do you have anything else coming up? Or if you do, this is the best place to reach me. Um, and also try to follow up with them as well as much as you can. Um, or something to remember you by. Like, hey, this is where I'm from. This is what we're looking for. We spoke about X, Y, Z. Um, it can be whatever. It's something that just keeps that appeal. Because um, remember, even if every person on this call, every person on this call reaches out to a broker, all of a sudden you're like, what is that? 18 people? Who, who, who's going to stand out? Make sure you can stand out in the, every room you're in. And that's a simple way to put it because at the end of the day, to the point that was made earlier, they are just people. And they're going to forget just like every like you guys probably do. I know. I, I forget everything. I forgot what I had for breakfast this morning. I forgot you what know? I had for dinner. I was eating on this call, so I remember. And my plate's still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you're on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, so, so those are things. Obviously, the call was great. I'm not like I don't, I don't really need to touch on anything else. You, got, you've done this your experience, and I wouldn't really change much. It's more of just like, all right, what else can uh, we do to make sure they know who we are? Because at the end, they, the fact that like the odds of them, that first deal being the one you put an offer on and purchase is low. Um, the chance of it being the next one, two, three, four, a lot higher. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's funny that you, uh, Rosie, you got a question. Go ahead and ask your question. Hi, guys. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. Hey, Rosie. Um, how are you here? Questions? Good. Thank you. Happy to be here. I have a question. When you say you call these brokers just to uh, build relationships, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say I call three brokers a day. When is a do you have a limit of brokers so you can continue this relationship with them? Let's say I call 20 this week. Like how do I keep up with this relationship with them? Do I call the same 20 next week? How do I do that? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's a great question. I don't know that there's a valid answer to that, but obviously there's a, at a certain point, you can only know so many people, right? So I get, I get where your question's coming from. Um, you need some, you'd have to use some sort of system. It could be just a spreadsheet, right? It could be a more sophisticated um, CRM, but yeah, then you just have to, how often are you going to follow up with them? I like to follow up with them at least once a week. Um, not at least. It, I, I don't usually follow up more than once a week, unless we have an active deal that we're working on, right? But once a week, once every two weeks, but I don't know what your limit is, right? It depends. Are you working a W-2 or are you not working a W-2? You, you know, so that's a very personal thing. Um, but good point, right? If every single week you're just calling a new 20 and you're never following up, you're probably not going to get very far. You also, gotta, you gotta also, be continuing to follow up. I like to finish every call with something to leave off of or something to follow up with. Like if I'm if I call a broker about a property, if I'm if I don't care about that property, or if I I'm like okay maybe this property wasn't the one, I don't really have any more questions about this one. Um, hey, I'll follow up with you in two weeks just to see if you have anything else. That that's a five second conversation. Hey, this is Rosa. I spoke we spoke two weeks ago about the property on X Y Z Street. Uh, just touching base to see if you have anything that fits my buy box. They don't remember your buy box. Remind them. Perfect. Yeah, that and was my second question. How how do you like? Is it better for like the majority of the brokers if you call them or if you email them? Do they rather text or that's a question that I should ask them when my, I call them the first time? Exactly. My first conversation, I'll call them because it's the fastest. Email is going to get very like informal. You don't really get to know them. It's very slow as well. Um, so I would first call them, then ask them, hey, what's the best way to get a hold of you for when I follow up? Or if I have any questions even. Like, remember, this is their full time. They want you to reach out. You're doing half the battle for them. Trust me, if I had my bar or people reach out to me as much as I reach out to other people and 
it's uh, on the on my real estate side, I'd be a lot happier. Trust me. But um, it, it just comes down to communication and how efficient you are. Um, be organized. Have, like, don't be b too aggressive, but be realistic. Like, hey, w I have X Y Z coming up, or I have uh, I have some time. Let me call this broker from last week, and and just be comfortable with it. Have fun with it. Like I look at this as a game. This isn't like we're, we're just having fun out here. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, you bet. So back just real quick before we wrap up, I want to go back to the script just for a minute, right? I didn't mention yet. The last thing I have on my script is asking about the debt, right? The deal is at the end of the day is the most important thing, right? If the numbers don't make sense, they don't make sense. The debt is irrelevant. Um, if the property is worth three million and they're asking six, there's no deal. I I don't care what your debt is, but I always want to know if it's something I think I can pursue. I, I ask them, is there any assumable debt, or is owner financing available? You want to ask the broker about that. And a lot of times they'll say no, they're they're not going to owner finance. Don't take that as gospel, right? You never know. Um, but it. If they go further and say, yeah, we've had six owner financing offers and they've turned every one of them down. Okay, so then I might ask some more detailed questions about that. Like, right? what's the most, uh, what's the most they've offered uh, on an owner financing deal, right? What's or what's the least they've asked, they've been offered to carry, right? And I had that question one time, and the guy told me the best offer they'd gotten so far was 35% owner carry back. And I said, okay, so we've tested the line at 35%. Maybe the owner carrying 30% could work. For them. We don't know yet, right? They've turned down the other offers, but maybe 30, maybe we have to get to 25, who knows? But they're, there's, they're having conversations about owner finance. So we know that that's good. To know. Is the debt assumable? The broker often knows that. And even that I wouldn't take as gospel because they might say no, and they really haven't investigated. So they're just saying no because they they don't want to take the time. Um, but that's something to dig into because if the debt's assumable, that's important. Uh, now, if it's assumable and it's you know has to be paid off in two years, it's not it's not very useful. Right? That, I, I wouldn't encourage you to go after a deal uh, that has a two uh, try to assume a loan that only has two years left on. But I'm hearing about people that are assuming no loans right now that have nine years left on the terms with a great rate you know that can make that can make the deal work so um there's, there's no such thing as bad information right yeah it is and it, always just keep asking questions right they let and then of course ed mentioned this the last thing i do you ever have any off-market deal always ask right? and some people will tell you everything we do we put on the market they just don't deal with off-market situation. Most of the brokers I reach out to say, yeah, we get, we, or, and some of them even say, we have off-market deals all the time. And I find like those are the brokers that have, they've been in the business a while, they have a big buyer's list and they just bring deals to their buyers that they know can perform um, with, when the, you know, when it, when the situation warrants it. And sometimes that's just a matter of a seller who really doesn't want to go through the process of marketing it fully and just wants a quick deal. And that's great, right? That's what we're looking for. So um, I always ask about that. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, thanks for being here. Appreciate you joining us again. Jimmy made a comment about know your buy box, right? That's critical. They're, often they will ask you that. Um, I always tell them that on the phone, but that's something that I always follow up with in an email in writing, right? Here's what I'm looking for. Keep an eye out for this. And you might even put that, you know, every every week when you follow up, it doesn't have to be a phone call, right? It might be just, hey, we spoke last week. I just wanted to, you know, stay in touch. Uh, if, if you have anything, any deals you want to talk about, feel free to give me a call. But here's my buy box again. This is what I'm looking for. Just stay top of mind, right? That's going to be key. When they have that deal that comes across their plate, if they've been seeing your email every single week, they're, they're going to think about you. Right? Um, that's really all I have as far as the script. 
Um, if anybody does, if, does anybody have any questions about that specifically? Any questions about reaching out to brokers at all? Um, again, if you guys need, and Mark, I know you want to start calling. I'm, I'll send you that script tonight. I'm happy to get on a, a Zoom with you and make calls with you this week if you want to schedule some time to do that. Okay, thank you. Anybody else that wants to do that, shoot me an email, say, hey, I'd like to schedule some time to make broker calls. Let's do it. I'd love to get on a, on a Zoom with three or four of you and we'll just start dialing, see who we can, who we can get on the phone. So I see some heads. Rosa, you want to join us? All right, make sure you send me an email. I think I'm on. Okay, send me an email. Thank you. Um, Kat, you gonna join us doing that? Awesome, shoot me an email. Who else, everybody else has got there. Dexter, we'd love to have, we'd love to hear you make a call. That would be awesome to get you live calling. You, you do, you're doing it with confidence and that's the key, right? We want you to get you guys to where you're confident making these phone calls. Why don't awesome. sound good. Mac T, you got a question. Just under the wire, we're five minutes over, make it quick. <laughs> Here, what you got? Oh, you got to unmute, Mac. There you go. Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, I would like to join, so I'm going to send you email. Okay, perfect. We'll Let's do, do it. Yeah, yeah, Love it. No, thank you. All right, guys, we're, one of the things we're committed to is trying to keep these calls tight. My phone's ringing. Shut that off. Ah, oh, shoot. Can you guys hear that? Do you hear that sound? Good. Okay. Um, anyway, appreciate you guys being here. We're six minutes over. Again, I'll, I'll still take questions if you have them. If not, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. We really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, tell your friends about it. Spread the word. Get people to join the Freedom Chasers. Every week, we're, we're doing these Zooms. It's all for free. We're doing our, we want to keep it for free. Um, and we just want to do deals with you guys. We want to get you guys doing deals and we want to do deals with you. So appreciate you being here. Ed, thanks for your support as always. Jerry, thanks for joining us. I think Jerry might have hopped off. I don't see him now. Jimmy, appreciate you being here. Rosa, great to see you again. Great Ronald to see and Mary you. Jane, Thank come you. on back. Bridget, you hid behind your picture all night, but we see you there. We know you're there. <laughs> Send us an email. Let's let's get in touch. Great to see you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have Bye. A great day.